Hey beloved, Krista Petterford here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing seven ways to thrive in your waiting season while you're waiting for breakthrough. Sometimes we're waiting for God to fulfill his promises. And there are other times when we're also waiting for different kinds of breakthrough. We're waiting for change. We're waiting for financial breakthrough. We're waiting for relationship breakthrough. We're waiting for a marriage to be reconciled, to be healed, or to get the marriage breakthrough we want for us single ladies who want to be married. We're waiting for a difficult situation to get better. We're waiting for breakthrough where things seem to be stuck where there is a promise, the purpose of God, the plan, or something that you desire or a goal that you've been working for. We find ourselves in waiting seasons. We can be in waiting seasons in some areas of our lives, and then we can be progressing in other areas of our lives. But there are ways to thrive when you are waiting and it feels like your life has been put on hold. I've been waiting for things for several years, and that doesn't mean that my life has not progressed, but I began to wait for to do certain things in my life. I put myself in this place of pause. I'm waiting for change to happen, praying for change to happen, and I've talked about that. I have some notes here, so if you see me looking down, um, waiting for things to be completed. But one of the things that I learned in my 40s that I'm still learning in my 50s is how to enjoy each season. And I spent the majority of my 40s in a waiting season and a long waiting season. And then it began to dawn on me that I could enjoy the life that I have now instead of waiting for things to happen because those are going to happen in due season. So I kind of held my breath. And as I said, I put my life on an indefinite hold. Like, God, this, I can't do anything until this happens. Like I'm thriving in my career and, and in ministry and things. But as far as the things I wanted personally in my life that matter to me, truly matter to me, it was like, I can't be happy. I can't go do things. And so God wants us to thrive and not just survive. Um, and I wish that I knew that then. We can't go back to that. I can't go back to that. We cannot um, receive the years that we've already spent, although God can make up before and redeem the time. But I am so happy that I know now that I do not have to wait until the battle is over, until the breakthrough comes to enjoy my life. As you guys can see, by the way, I am in a hotel. I'm traveling for work. So I'm in a hotel and I have been in um, sessions already. So I'm making this video and then going back. Um, one of the things I want to say before I get into this is that I thought... I had that waiting and not doing anything, putting myself on hold with some type of way being faithful to God and a good Christian woman to be waiting for change and praying and not doing anything. And I thought that the other side of that was that if I got that, I would get ahead of God and God will check you when you're getting ahead of him. But there's a difference when we're moving out of God's will and his timing and we're just stuck in an old expired season and paralyzed because that's not really faith. That is fear. That is fear-based. Those type of things are rooted in fear. But I was in a survival mode. Um, and by surviving, I mean existing, but not really thriving. So in this video, I'm going to share seven ways that I began to thrive in my waiting season. You can be in a waiting season and you can still thrive and enjoy your life. And so this is what I want to share with you while you're waiting for breakthrough. But first, what is the difference between thriving and surviving? Surviving by definition, I took the time to look these up, is the state or fact of continuing to live or exist. The dictionary says typically in spite of an accident, ordeal, or difficult circumstances. Also, another word for it is to withstand. We talked, we hear that in Ephesians, stand and withstand the enemy. But to thrive 
is characterized by success or prosperity, to grow vigorously, to flourish, to gain in wealth or possessions, to prosper, to progress toward and realize a goal despite or because of circumstances. And so God calls us to be in good health and prosper. That's what John prayed. Beloved, I pray above all else that you would be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. There are seasons where all we can do is survive. We live to fight another day to uh, fight another battle, to make it through another battle. But that's not all God has for you or for me. And if you've been in survival mode where you have been making it and living, but you haven't been thriving and prospering in your soul and in your health and in the things that matter to you, because girlfriend, sister friend, beloved, it is different than I am an, ac an accomplished, successful woman. And on paper, I look good, but there are different things in my life that I I had put on hold where I wasn't thriving because I didn't think I deserved to or I thought I had to wait or as I've said in other um, videos that I thought there was only one outcome only one happily ever after so if that didn't happen it was this vision that I had for my life or bust and and I didn't allow myself to believe I could have something different and so I want to say that that is the first part of prospering is um, I'm going to get into this, these now. Fully let go of your past. Surrender that part of your life. What didn't work, what did work. The, th the fun memories and the great and the great memories as well as the difficult ones to the Lord. And the things that you are still waiting on God to do. Surrender them to the Lord. Give them to God. Let, stop holding on to them. And give yourself permission to focus forward. Number two, confront your fears and your limiting beliefs. Sometimes we have to say out loud, as I'm saying in this video, I thought I only had one outcome. I thought there was only one happily ever after for me. Address them with the word of God. Sometimes the enemy will make strongholds and he will tell us lies and get us to believe something and grip us with fear. So sometimes we have fear of the future um, about what you think you can't have or what you think you can only have. What story you have been telling yourself, there's a story that you've been telling yourself and you haven't given yourself permission to write a new chapter, to erase what you have written in your future. Um, even if your past had one story, that God can bring a plot twist and change your story and still bring you to an expected end. And then also under limiting beliefs, we're talking about confronting fears and limiting beliefs, confront your shame. See yourself as God sees you. Sometimes there's a shame that is associated with what not did not go well in our last season. So while we're waiting for God to do something in our new season, those are things that make us just survive. Whatever it is that is holding you and gripping you while you're waiting for God to do the new thing and bring you breakthrough, confront the shame and dismantle it, denounce it, plead the blood of Jesus over it, resurrect the word of God over it, and, and don't allow shame to hold you in a place of just surviving. Like, I'm just existing because maybe I messed up, maybe I brought this season on my own, maybe I'm not good enough. Whatever the reason is that the enemy would lie to you, confront those limiting beliefs. Speak out loud or write down what stories, the stories that you are telling yourself, and then address them and confront them um, with the word of God. That, what does God say about you? See yourself as God sees you. Believe what he says about you. And if it's counter to what you've been telling yourself and your fears and limiting beliefs, then let those go and fully embrace God's plan for you. Even if you don't know what that is, be willing to let God do a new thing in your life. And then number three, cast your cares upon the Lord. Stop holding on to things you cannot control. As I said earlier, holding on to things is not a sign of faith. It's a sign and a form of fear. Give yourself permission to be free 
of your worries and just give it to the Lord. Spend time with God daily in his word so you can see things from his perspective so that you can tear down the lies of the enemy and renew your mind daily and cast your cares daily, the worries of yesterday, the worries of tomorrow. Be around his people, people that iron is going to sharpen iron, people that are going to speak life into you and not agree with your worries and your fears. Spend time in worship and prayer. These are ways that you cast your cares on the Lord. It's easy to say cast your cares on the Lord, but I hope that I've just listed some ways that you can do that. Spend time in worship and prayer in God's word. Put yourself around the right people after you cast your cares upon him so that you keep those cares. You don't pick them up. You don't walk around and worry and fear about the breakthrough or about what you could have done or when God win, but you are casting the care of tomorrow and how it's going to happen and the past, the regrets of the past on the Lord. And then number four, trust your future and working things out to the Lord. Believe that God is able to make things work for your good. You don't know when, you don't know how, but you're going to trust it to the Lord. This is like surrendering not only the past to him, but the future and how things are going to work out. So uh, fully letting go of your past is surrendering the past. Casting your cares upon the Lord is surrendering the present. And trusting your future to the Lord is surrendering your future to God. So you can live in the season that you're in. And so I'm going to say this one. Number five is start living now. When you've given it all to God, do the thing that you've been waiting to do. Not getting ahead of God or doing things out of time, but maybe there's something that you've been saying, when this happens, then I'll do that. When everything is just right, when my life is just right, when I get this breakthrough, when this or that happens, then I will do the thing that's in my heart, the thing that I love. I will start enjoying my life. I will exhale and stop holding my breath. Don't wait until things are perfect because time waits for no one. And we only have so much time on this earth to fulfill God's plan for our lives and to enjoy the life he's given us. You can be in the same environment and start doing something new. You can be waiting on something and haven't received a breakthrough in a certain area and begin to do what God calls you to do. And then I'm going to say this is so important. Cultivate a thankful and grateful attitude. This is number six. Learn to look for the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons in the season that you're in. If you haven't yet, you can go download my five clarifying questions for every season of life that will help you get clarity about what God is calling you to do and the things that you need to give your time and attention to. But it also helps you to do that so you can see clearly the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons that God has for you. And then also there's a season's journal where you can capture that, that you can write down daily what you're thankful and grateful for and you can write that down and you're looking for the beauty blessings purpose and lessons because one thing I have learned is that every season no matter how short or long no matter how difficult or delightful has a beginning and an ending with its own beauty blessings purpose and lessons we just have to learn to ask the right questions and change our perspective so that we can see what God is doing when we ask the right questions, instead of why is this happening, God, what are you doing and what do you want me to receive? We begin to see the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons. And that cultivates in us a thankful and grateful heart and attitude. Then I'm going to say number seven is do good to people. Take every opportunity to do good, especially to those in the household of the Lord. Galatians talks about waiting, and but there's a due season for your breakthrough. There's a due season for your waiting season to come to an end. So while you're doing that, Paul encourages believers, while you're waiting for your due season, don't grow weary in doing good. Take every opportunity, redeem every opportunity to do good to other people, um, especially those who are in the household of God. As we minister to others, it ministers to us. And so you're occupying and you're thriving by cultivating a life that is giving service to others, a life that is filled with uh, thankfulness and gratitude. This is how you thrive. You have to do those 
first four things to in, in, to begin to enter fully into the season that you are in to be present. So part of number five was be present in the season that you're in. I said start living now, but that means um, be present. Say yes to more things. Connect with more like-minded people. Even stay, I mean, get out of your comfort zone. Possibly go on a date. I'm, I should be talking to myself who hasn't been on a date in years. Okay, but anyway, but you know, I'm going to be more present and possibly say yes. Um, and so, and then finally, number eight, which is um, kind of a bonus. Um, and kind of because I thought about it after I wrote this list, believe and speak the best of all people. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use and abuse you. When we bless and we don't curse and we have a thankful attitude, when we speak good of people and we speak well of our circumstances, ourselves, and we use, learn to use our mouths and our, 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 our voice to just uh, cultivate an environment of blessing and joy. We are cultivating an, an environment where we can thrive, where we can live. The word says, he who would love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. And so the opposite of that is good. And I've learned in this season to bless every situation, to bless those that despise me, to bless those who speak evil against me, bless and do not curse. While I'm waiting for God to do something for me, getting focused on the wrong thing that other people are doing while I'm waiting for my breakthrough. I don't want to get in offense. I don't want to cause more problems. I don't want to be down in a cast down state. And so I really um, keep my environment um, filled with good things and joy and peace and not allow certain things in to my atmosphere, certain spirits. That would be a, a better way to say in, um, and give them permission to act up by keeping a positive attitude and mindset and speaking words that bless and charge my atmosphere with the presence of God and the glory of God so that I can begin to thrive. I can begin to, instead of holding my breath, um, begin to do what I'm called to do. And I'll lastly close it with the scripture. You know, when um, the children of Israel, and you may not have rebelled, so I'm not comparing that part, but when the children of Israel had gone into exile, Jeremiah says to them in that same scripture where he says in uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, I believe it's 11, that uh, for I know the plans I have for you, plans of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future and bring you to an expected end. He goes on to say, and I think it's right before or after that, to dwell in the city that you're in, even though they're in exile, even though they have to wait 70 years. He says, plant gardens, build houses. Allow your sons and daughters to marry. Live while you're in this waiting season and pray a blessing on the city that you're in because if this city is blessed, then you are blessed. And so these are things that you are, They he told them to thrive. Don't just survive. Don't just hunker down and wait it out. Be present in this season to enjoy the season that you're in, to live and to survive, to prosper and to flourish, to gain wealth and possessions and not put your life on hold because it's going to be a while and you're going to miss a whole generation was going to miss their life because they were waiting for the thing. And it's really about the joint, the journey and not just the expected end. The journey, how we live the journey leads us to our expected end, the future and the hope that God has for us. And sometimes when we start moving and we finally start going, we see that God wants us to take another turn. It reminds me of Naomi because she was waiting to see what was next and she didn't even believe that she had a good future. But because she moved forward while she was waiting for God, he was able to bring things about in her life. So sometimes we just have to get moving in this season that we're in. Focus on your present season and how you can flourish and thrive in this season and not um, just survive and wait like they did 
in Jeremiah or like Jeremiah commanded the children of Israel to do to thrive in your season, to plant, to water, to increase, to produce, to enjoy, to bless, even while you're exiled. Because sometimes waiting can feel like you're exiled. You're set apart from everybody else's life. It seems like it's going well and they're doing things. And here you are waiting for um, a husband, waiting for your children to get better, waiting for financial breakthrough, waiting for that house that God promised you, waiting for that job, waiting for better health, waiting for reconciliation and relationships, just waiting for your business to go, waiting for whatever it is. I, I don't know. Um, but sometimes I do know that it can feel like a form of exile. And so I just want you to know that you can thrive. Uh, give yourself permission. I give you permission today if you need someone to tell you that. And so does God. He wants you to thrive uh, and understand that you can thrive in the season you're in while you are waiting. God bless you until next time.